we're going to play now a piece that you probably don't hear that often. You haven't had this on your series before, have you? <laughs> uh, the, the first sonata of Charles Ives. And probably you know that you know, Charles Ives was a great American iconoclast and curmudgeon of the highest order and was born and raised in Danbury. And, and he had this prickly personality and he wrote, you know, said you have to take your dissonance like a man and all sorts of horrible things. Uh, and he hated all the critics of his time and, and they hated him so they was fine. Uh, and, and yet he was later discovered and became an important figure, incredibly important figure. And what's interesting about Ives is that though he's in some ways very much a modernist, basically Ives' project, what he's after is romantic in essence, which is nostalgia and memory. He's trying to recreate the musical experiences of his childhood, hymns, marches, tunes, and he's trying to recreate the fervency, the unprofessionalism in many cases, the sheer soul-stirringness of these experiences when, when this music was the community. It was, in a way, life. And it was such an important part of every social event. Um, this first sonata has several of these encounters with music as, as experienced. It's a big piece, it's a big romantic piece, and the first one is probably, as typical with Ives, the most unpleasant to listen to, um, or the most, the most complicated to listen to, because it begins with a very strange and slow set of cadenzas, the piano and the violin dialoguing back and forth, seemingly almost uh, without any connection to each other, but gradually we assemble ourselves into an allegro, and, and various kind of hoedowns begin to appear. Basically, the entire first one is a riff on, on one tune, which is called Shining Shore. I saw a bit of it in your, in your program note, but it's actually not the right Shining Shore, sadly. Um, what? You know that tune? The first thing you'll hear the is the, the, that's the tune, right? And the first thing you'll hear in the violins is a sort of vaguely paraphrased fragments of that tune. And you'll hear eventually the piano play very and the violins, of course, playing something totally else, which will maybe be upsetting. But um, you see, you'll hear, so there's this very slow, sort of somber, wintry Connecticut cadenza, gradually accumulating into a big, fast part, and then back to the somber mood of the beginning. The second movement is, I, and we agree on this, the second movement is one of the most beautiful things he ever wrote, and it's about Civil War remembrance. And it's basically about two tunes, unfortunately, that have fallen a little bit into the into the ether or whatever. Um, the first tune is That Old Oaken Bucket. You know the one I'm talking about, right? Something on something's in that old oaken bucket. And you hear the beginning, um, the violin play this tune almost completely on, and, and it's the most tender and kind of gorgeous. And gradually, the pianist begins marching, ignoring the violin. Obviously, all the boys who went off to this, a Civil War tune, right? All the boys are marching off, and the violin is left sort of quietly musing on the old oaken bucket still, while the pianist is marching ever more violently. And then in the middle um, comes tramp, tramp, tramp. And there's an incredibly wild, and, and you can imagine the sort of veterans reminiscing over the war and getting riled up, and there's a big piano cadenza, and then, then uh, gradually there's this sort of like, as in Ives often happens, kind of unbelievably difficult grind between the two tunes, the mood of exuberance and the, and the sort of desperate sadness of the original tune. And gradually this, the beginning tune comes back, begins to emerge, and uh, I think it's... It's one of Ives' most ambitious and beautiful, and hopefully for you, heart-wrenching um, war. It's a war piece. It's a war nostalgia piece. And then, wonderfully, at the end, there's a little glimpse of a new tune. And the last one, which is entirely about one more tune, and all the, every, the whole town marching along to work for the night is coming. Uh, but 
but with all kinds of dissonances, of course, because the bass drum doesn't always play at the right moment, and, and blah, 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 etc. right? And, and then uh, that movement is very big also. It has another tune in Watchman Tell Me of the Night. Which you probably know. Uh, and then back at the end, this kind of incredible climax of the march. All we do this work for the night is coming, work for the night is coming, work for the night is coming. And at last, against all odds, in F major, the bells clanging, everything. The whole town is singing, work for the night is coming. Uh, and then it, it kind of fades into this, for Ives, sort of unusually tender and loving gospel finish. Amen. F major. And one last unanswered question, then the piece is over. So I hope you enjoy this big old Ives piece. <laughs> <laughs>